in the, the figure and, and in the image of Coach Alisi, and they're here because they play the Baruch way, and that's defense and sharing the ball. And meanwhile, for the Lehman Lightning, they come in with a terrific point guard, 6'4", fifth-year senior, Gian Batista, was the CUNY Player of the Year, likely an All-American. He is a triple-double machine. Yeah, Gian, he can do it all, man. And, and you know, and, and looking at him, uh, for the first time in 16 years, a Lehman player has, like, had triple doubles. He's done it three times this year. In the semifinals, he gets it done, has 25, 14, and 10, you know, to bring his team to this championship. And he controls the game, you know, looking for his, his guys and, and doing all the dirty work. And the points just come because he plays the game the right way. And for the Bearcats, they get here bringing back six of their top eight players from 2020 when they lost the conference final that year, including their leading scorer this year, two-time first-team all-conference, Adnan Bajrami. Yeah, and Adnan from the Houston, Texas native, he's been a great all-around player for Baruch over these past years. He has 39 points against Lehman, you know, the last time that they played, hitting seven threes. And not only that, he can just turn around and play great defense as well. So this is going to be an exciting matchup. They split in the regular season, and this is it. This is the championship. This is what it's all about. The third member of our crew tonight on the sideline is Zach Weiss. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, pregame. As we have Baruch and Lehman in the men's championship. Zach Weiss with you. Here with head coach Steven Schulman, your team was the number one seed. It's been a balanced attack all season. But what's really been the key? You guys getting the best record, now making it to the championship game. You know, I think it's just been a real together bunch. Uh, COVID hit and it kind of just bonded us more together. We had a lot of obstacles early in the year that just brought the group together. And we've had great leadership from our captains, uh, Gian Batista and Isaiah Gathers. And now that you're actually in the big game, what's the most important thing for you guys starting out in the first five minutes to try and take advantage against, against Baruch? Yeah, number one, every time you're in a championship game, you got to come out confident and loose. Sometimes there's nerves that take place, so you just got to fight through those nerves the first five minutes and, and uh, make sure it's still a good ball game at that time. And obviously, you guys have a, you mentioned the balanced attack. A bunch of different guys can score, but are you going to be looking to them with the three ball, or is it going to be more about just taking the best shot available? No, we're not a three ball kind of team. We're, uh, you know, we hunt the paint. That's our saying, hunt the paint. Today it's hunt the black, uh, get into the black and make things happen. We want to shoot foul shots. If we're shooting foul shots, we're playing well. That is Coach Steven Schulman. I'm Zach Weiss. And we go back to you, Ralph. Tip coming up. So the two regular season games were thrillers, and we can't wait to get started with this one. It's Lehman and Baruch in the CUNY Championship game next on Facebook Live. 2021-22 CUNYAC Championships are brought to you by Pepsi. Pepsi, the official soft drink of the CUNY Athletic Conference. The Hospital for Special Surgery, U.S.'s number one hospital for orthopedics, proud to be the official hospital of the CUNY Athletic Conference. USS, the University Student Senate, a proud sponsor of the CUNY Athletic Conference. Thank you for providing our students with the platform to help shape the City University of New York. Health First, we'd like to thank our newest sponsor, Health First, New York's largest not-for-profit insurer, for being a proud sponsor of CUNYAC Community College and Senior College Championship. Hometown Ticketing, thank you to Hometown Ticketing, the official ticketing provider of the CUNY Athletic Conference and Bob McCloskey Insurance, a longtime supporter of the CUNY Athletic Conference, the official athletic insurance provider of the NJCAA. Here we go with the 2022 CUNY Men's Basketball Championship game. The top seeded Lehman Lightning 21 and 3, the 19 and 7, two seeded Baruch Bearcats. Time now for the starting lineups. Lehman being presented with their regular season championship plaque for a 22nd year head coach Steve Schulman. But you know they want to be raising a championship trophy at the end of this one. Two regular season games were thrillers. They were both decided in the last two minutes by the home team in that game to win them, both decided by a mere four points each. Let's introduce the starters. 
Lehman will have a, a terrific lineup of guards with six foot four, 50 year senior point guard Gian Baptista. He is from Santiago in the Dominican Republic. As they'll actually introduce Baruch first, so let's do that. The point guard just taking over in January, Sean Donnellan, six foot redshirt sophomore from Eastchester, New York. And he's joined in the backcourt by Jamel Fair, 6'1 redshirt sophomore from Jamaica, Queens, New York. Mike Richards is the terrific defensive player, 6'1, fifth year senior from Brooklyn's Midwood High School. Adnan Bajrami at 6'3, a fifth year senior from Houston, Texas. Their leading scorer, he'll play the four spot for the undersized Bearcats. And Emil Purisic at 6'4, he has been the five man all year. A redshirt sophomore from Queens in Bryant High School. He was second team all CUNY for 10th year coach John Alisi, an alum of the program playing for the great and late Ray Rankis. He won a CUNY championship and Baruch, the first ever title for the program in the year 2000. He graduated, was an assistant, now in his 10th season coaching the Bearcats. Baruch two years ago was in the CUNY final lost at York College 62-55 to Brooklyn. Brooklyn was the five seed then. The Bearcats pursue the program's fourth championship. They won it with some of these players on the team in 2019. There, a look at the starters for the Baruch Bearcats. So over to the Lehman Lightning. 21 and three on the year. They've won five straight. They were the preseason two team. And Gian Batista could be an All-American for Lehman, the first in program history. Batista, the CUNY Player of the Year, was a two-time junior college all-region player, but he has exploded now at the four-year level and their unquestioned leader. Batista is joined by six-foot wrencher junior Will Feldman of Riverdale Kingsbridge High School, an outstanding outside shooter. Isaiah Gethers has exploded into a, an all-conference player two-time first team all-conference but he is even better he is their leading scorer at nearly 24 a game and leads the conference and is eighth in the country is gathers at six foot four a fifth year senior from brooklyn's rucker high school mo idrisu six foot redshirt junior from the bronx plays the four and lennox degrasse a 6'3 junior from the bronx 28 year old starting center he joined the team ahead of this year and he has been invaluable with his maturity and rebounding ability. But there's the aforementioned Batista and a look at the Lehman Lightning for Coach Steve Schulman. Sean, this one feels like it's gonna go right down to the wire. Question is what happens before that to lead into it? The top two defensive teams in the conference, what might separate these two? You know, when, when I look at Lehman, I see, uh, I see guards and I see guys, you know, after their, uh, after Feldman, everybody's 6'4". So they, they're interchangeable. They can all play switching defense. They can all, you know, work work on the same things on the floor. So I think with Baruch, they're going to have to try to neutralize uh, that length by playing, uh, 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 playing well, like executing their offense, slowing things down, down a bit, you know, getting into their offensive sets and making Lehman work every play. And I think if they can do that, you know, they can come out victorious. These two teams are very even in match. You know, they split the season series, you know, uh, what, four points what it, it was, you know, in each game, uh, the differential. So this is going to be a, a battle to the end. Both coaches calling this a heavyweight fight for the two regular season meetings with Paul Toomey, Mike Evans, and Ray Downs doing the honors. John Pratt, our fourth official. Lehman wins the tap. They're in the white. Baruch in the sky blue as the two seed. Baruch and their familiar man-to-man. -man. They'll occasionally switch it up to his own, but they have two elite defenders to go up against the big two of Lehman, as there's a turnover as the pass by Gian Batista sends through the hand of his teammate. Michael Richards and Adnan Bajrami, the two defenders for Baruch to go up against Gian Batista and Isaiah Gathers, two players that were averaging 25 points per game together at the same time for Lehman. And the Bearcats this year, not the traditional Baruch team as the three is off. This has been John Alisi's best offensive team, 79 points per game. 
according to the available stats that they had to dig up. And there's the jump shot that goes down for Sean Donnellan. This is the highest scoring Baruch team since it through the 2006 season. And now an offensive foul, Batista picks up an early one. The charge drawn inside. You know, see him smiling right there. He, he, he's, you know, even killed right now. But you're right, this Baruch team, you know, has a good flow offensively. And just on the top, Ralph, talking about their offensive execution, getting those good looks because they can really fill it up. And that's a transition from them because usually they're one of the top teams in the country defensively. Here on the drive, wild shot, Michael Richards. And the Bearcats typically were, they, they are, still are basically the number one defensive team. The metrics say they are number two behind Lehman, but even Steve Shulman admits they are still the best defensive unit. Right. That's a missed shot by Will Feldman. But the offense has been better and shows you the, the veteran abilities and the interchangeability of Baruch that has contributed to that with the returns of Bajrami and Purisic, fifth-year players in the starting lineup for Baruch. Right. Donnellan steps in, tough shot, and the rebound, Lennox DeGrasse. The Lightning usually are Lightning in the open floor, but they've been held to the half court so far. Here's Isaiah Gathers, perhaps the most improved player in the conference. He drills a three, and Lehman is in front. Big semifinal game where he had 30, real quiet 30, uh, to get Lehman to the championship game. Against Hunter, and he did it, gathering a <laughs> career high 20 rebounds. Yep. Super double double. That's just not a double double. That's a super one. Bajrami, he'll take the contested three and nail it. Tough shot. Right. Adnan Bajrami at 33% from three. Yeah, that's their guy. He's he's their player. Championship game two years ago, if you remember, he you know came up a little short, only had 12 points. I know he's looking forward to redeeming himself. Baruch able to rebound. And the Bearcats would love this kind of pace to continue for the full 40 minutes. It's up to John. He'll run a play every time down. You know, he, he likes to, you know, challenge the defense of the op opposition. Donlin turns back. Shot clock to five for Jamel Fair. Uh. Oh, a tough runner. He is a Queens kid that's had a all CUNY level type of year. The Baruch staff felt he might have been overlooked. He might have been the 11th guy in the awards, but only 10 guys get named all conference, a first and second team named by CUNY. They had a great year, average 12 points a game for the Bearcats. Off the hesitation dribble, Mo Idrisu had his shot partially blocked. So Baruch at 7-3. Richards, he's defended by Gian Batista. Shot clock again. Under 10, Batista deflects the pass, and now the Lightning for the first time a chance to run. Feldman to the basket. And that's Lehman's game. Quick up the floor, they got guys the same size, they rebound, they go. Like to get out in transition. Baruch was the preseason favorite. They went 19 and seven. Their point guard left the program at the start of January, so Sean Donlin went from the sixth man elevating his role. Right hand jump hook is off from Jamel Fair. While the Lightning came in with these big expectations and have reached this point to their expectation as there's deflection out of bounds by Bajrami. Talking to Steve Shulman and all throughout the pandemic and quarantine start Gian Batista took over leadership. He organized this team. They played in outdoor summer leagues together. Lehman was not allowing players on campus in the fall if it wasn't your team season. So this team played pickup bar, ball in a local park until October 15th. That's when players were allowed to be together. Feldman, the three. Uh, he's a knockdown shooter inside or 
outside of the park. Yeah, that time he was ready, had his hands ready to let it go. Baruch slow to uh, contest the shot. He's been hitting the three lately, coming off of a career-high 20, four of seven from three against Hunter in the semifinal. Bajrami missed the runner, got his own rebound, and he missed the follow. And on the glass for Lehman is Nagai Herrera, 6'4", sophomore from the Bronx, off the lightning bench. And Gathers will pick up a bump from Michael Richards. So Lehman in front, grabbing their first lead. The Lightning are number one in CUNY and number three in the NCAA in field goal percentage defense. They've been known for their offense. With the gaudy numbers they put up, it's quietly been the Lightning defense statistically that has perhaps surged them to the top of the league. Batista, he'll take a contested two, and that's short, not exactly the shot that the Lehman Lightning wanted. And he's at his best going to the basket, getting in the lane and, and mid-ranging. Richards, his pass actually hit the backboard. And the rebound inside for Jack Reese off the Baruch bench, and we'll get a whistle. And the foul is on Lehman's Isaiah Gethers. So both Gethers and Batista, each with an early foul. Reese on the inbound, that's an easy one. A mistake defensively, Emil Purisic the layup, and the Bearcats back in front. Yeah, caught Lehman napping on that screen, and the screen-to-screener action, they both went for the outside man, leaving it wide open. And Purisic has been their facilitator as a 6-4 center. Feldman, backdoor cut, Batista got to the basket uh, and has his first bucket. And that's his game right there. He can, re when he gets to that rim route, he has a lot of finishing options. Left hand, right hand, he gets over the rim also. To the right hand jump hook, Furisic with great patience there. And the Bearcats back in front again. Baruch ended the regular season having lost three straight, but they've looked great in their two CUNY tournament games to turn things around as there's a jump hook from Isaiah Gathers. And back and forth we go. Super versatile player. He can go inside and post, go outside, hit the three. Can play guys from one to five on defense. Backdoor cut, Reese. Purisic. Richards takes the opening uh, and one. An aggressive take to the basket for Michael Richards. With the left hand, too. And to make that shot special was that he extended the left hand away from the defense to put it off the glass for the two. Sierra right here, just, just right in attack mode. Slides in the air, Ralphie, for the banker. And one opportunity. We have a timeout on the floor. So Baruch 13 12. As we look further at these two teams, let's talk about Lehman and how they got here. As Steve Shulman talks, he's been at this 22 years, five time CUNY Coach of the Year, being named this year. His last great team was 2018, and that team fell short in a great game to Staten Island. He knew that we have. A veteran team, our top four guys are veteran guys. That goes a long way in CUNY. Four seniors in the starting lineup as we see how they got here. Baruch overwhelming York, another sensational job they did defensively on York star Karan Dublin. And Lehman outscoring Hunter 122 to 95. That's not unusual, folks. Hunter runs the uh, scheme called the system where it's all threes and fast breaks nonstop. And uh, they typically will score 100, but they'll also give up 100. You know, Ralph, if you remember back in the 90s, there was Loyola Marymount, mm -hmm. and that Hunter ran the same system. It's take a shot under seven seconds. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they led the country in, in a variety of uh, offensive uh, categories. Yep, and Hunter is trying it, and 
seeing if that can produce uh, a championship level program. They've been very competitive as Richards converts the three point play. Isaiah Gathers turned down the three. Batista, good skip. Feldman, feet set. Uh. Oh, Batista special. Nice drive, and he has the presence of mind to see the shooter on the opposite tangent line, and they get the three. Feldman Will Feldman. Was, like he knew that was coming too, Ralph. And Will Feldman has eight in the early going. And he's been an X-factor guy of sorts for Lehman. As there's a missed shot from Baruch. And Steve Shulman feeling, look, it, it's as he, he quoted Shaq, where it's about the others in these championship games. Batista and Gathers, if they play to their level and put up 45 points between them, who else will step up among the role guys? Here's Gathers, and short on the three. Jack Reese, the rebound for Baruch. And for the Bearcats, can he manage this game for 40 minutes? Reese, tough shot. Ah, and then Jack hustle. Reese hustles for his own miss. Bajrami. And that bucket is all because of Jack Reese's hustle. Good hustle. That was a nice drive, too high off the glass. Didn't get it, but the presence of mind to recover his rebound and get it to Bajrami. Well, the way that John Alisi described him, that Jack Reese is probably the best role player Baruch has ever had. Feldman, uh -oh. look out, uh -oh. Will Feldman for three. Uh -oh. He's got three already from beyond uh -oh. the arc. Oh, and he's shaking his head like he should know better. That's when shooters know. They know they're in that, in that rhythm. Out in the ocean right now, swimming. Loving that rim, it's real, real big. It's big for Adnan Bajrami as well. He's up to eight. Oh yeah, he's come out ready to play. You can tell it. This is going to be a good one, Ralph. Back and forth we go up in Harlem in New York City. Love it. Richards right on the hip of Batista. What a matchup that will be tonight. As Bajrami has the deflection. Well, Baruch for so long has prided themselves on defense. They play such a relentless man-to-man. -man. Steve Shulman has seen it for a long time, both under John Alisi and his predecessor, Ray Rankis. They keep you in front. They don't allow easy baskets. Lehman has only had one easy bucket in transition so far, as here is Gathers, and Gathers is fouled. As Bajrami picks up the personal, so it'll be up to the Lightning to try to unlock that defense. I think Isaiah got away with one that time. Bajrani was on him and just jumped straight up. Didn't see much contact on that. But nonetheless, he's shooting two. Gathers has transformed himself into a great player. He is second all-time in scoring at Lehman. Comes in with 400. 1,431 points. Yeah, he'll have a chance to be Lehman's all-time leading scorer easily early next year. As he'll have a chance to pass the great Dwayne Roden. Oh, yeah. So Steve has had some really good teams over the past 10, 15 years. You know, good individual talent. Feldman will pick up the foul. But yet, they've only won that one championship in 2004. Lehman has been there and knocked on the door several times. 2018, they lost that heartbreaker to Staten Island when they were the one seed. They finished 22-5 and five that year. Their five losses by a total of just 20 points. And then before that, they lost in four straight semifinals and six of the last seven years. Fair. Bajrami. Long rebound, chase down. Feldman ahead of the pack, and you'll get an easy two. Yeah, Feldman off to a fast start for the Lehman Lightning. 
He's got 13 of their 20. And now an offensive foul drawn by Lehman. Charge taken by Marquise Johnson off the Lehman yeah, bench. Yeah, Marquise comes right in and makes the contribution. And you know, one of the things that you can see it here, out of control, he's right, right before the restricted area, and he makes the play. It's Mike Richards there, a little bit out of control. And that's the second on Richards. So he heads to the bench, and Baruch will bring in their best shot blocker, 6'5", Richard sophomore, Mohamed Guy. Johnson. Feldman, out of control, yep. offensive foul. That's drawn by Baruch, Not and good. stepping in is Jamel Fair. Yeah, Jamel, good, good job there. Feldman that time just trying to do a little bit too much. He's doing a good job from the outside. I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna swing that and get to an open spot and get it back. And that's Feldman second. Yep, you see how one play can alter the game. You know, having a great game, you know, going uh, away from his bread and butter on that move. So he's replaced by six foot sophomore Juan Fernandez. You know, you gotta love Elise, man. Elise has that real gangster, I'm gonna run a play until you stop me mentality, you know? Mm -hmm. He's run the same play every time the first 12 minutes. Meanwhile, here's the Lightning flying up the floor, but missing the left-hand layup was Juan Fernandez. But then Baruch throws away the outlet. You know, that's that New York City, old school, St. John's, Fordham. You know, mentality, if, if, if you can't stop my play, we'll run it until you're dead. And I'm all for it, Ralph, I love it. You know, it's a, it's a personal challenge. I'm on the other side. I'm personally gonna ask my players to step up and guard it. You know it's coming, let's go. If it ain't broke, don't fix that's it. That's right, that's right. And on the other end, correct. Correct. That's Mo Idrisu, who's really emerged as their number three scoring option recently. He misses a three. Lehman by three. Baruch led in the early going by four. Reese baseline drive, uh, and he got around Batista. Yeah. Well, I tell you, man, this is a tough crew Baruch has. You know, the, the, everyone out there is under 6'4", and they're playing really big, getting in the paint, you know, daring drives. Just matching Lehman's energy right now. Gathers stripped and stolen by Shrami. And then the knock away from behind by Fernandez. Marquise Johnson, oh, offensive foul. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Marquise on that one. I'm not sure about that one, bro. Looks like he made his way to the side of him and the Baruch play was still moving. See it right here. Uh, I don't know. Looked like he had a good opportunity. You know, he was set there. Tough call. Already four charges drawn yep. between the top two defensive teams in the CUNY. Yeah. Jack Reese getting it in. Donilon had a good look at a three. Gian Batista locating Juan Fernandez. Offensive rebound, Idrisu. Idrisu averaging 12.7 rebounds. He's learned to improve his compete level, and he has realized his talent to round the Lightning into a championship caliber team. And that'll yep, be a travel call. against Fair. Good call. Five turnovers apiece, and a timeout here by the Bearcats. 24-21, Lehman here in the lead, and it's been more of a half-court grind out of Fair. With the Lightning, the number one team in the CUNY, third in the country in field goal defense. The number two scoring defense as well. 
over the course of a year, a, a significant moment too, Sean. Lehman had to play their first eight games away from home this year. They had gym issues from flooding. They went to Centenary College in New Jersey, first semester, December 8th. They won a high level game, 92 to 87. They took a ton of confidence from that. But then teams on both sides, once Omicron hit, across CUNY, basically teams had about three and a half weeks off. And then they had to play, games jammed in, and Steve Shulman felt as soon as we got back, Friday, January uh, the 7th, they won three games in five days and seemed to take off from there and realize that we are a championship echelon caliber team. There always comes a moment of truth in any team season where they play on the road or they play a tough match and they overcome the adversity. You know, they make a play, you know, a series of plays that gets them where they need to go nice and old. That's Isaiah Gathers. Yeah. Isaiah again, man, left hand, right hand in the lane. That time using his left off the backboard for two. He's got nine. Lehman now for its longest lead of five. Donilon uh, found the pocket and scores his second field yeah, goal. Yeah, but that came off a, a, a nice screen, a pin down. Donilon knowing how to use it and lays it up for two. Batista, a look at the attention he draws. Mm. And he fires it through the hands of Fernandez. So you could see Baruch showing him tremendous respect, having the second defender waiting for him. Yeah, right now Batista's still trying to find his way in this game. But what I like about him, he's not going to change his game. He's going to always look, you know, for the open guy, not force it too much. And, you know, that goes a long way when you're trying to, uh, you know, secure a championship, just staying within yourself and playing the right way. Batista with already seven assists, Sean. Yep. Again, he's got three triple doubles on the year and 15 double doubles. And that's his game, Ralph. He, you know, he's not going to light it up from the outside, but he'll find someone that can light it up from the outside. Purisic catches the air ball and turns and scores. Yeah, he's been big in the paint for them. The 6 4 forward, you know, controlling the paint for Baruch. Idrisu on the baseline drive. Follow from Marquise Johnson. Nice controlled drive by Idrisu and Johnson on the opposite side puts it back in. He's a transfer from Division II Concordia College in the Bronx that closed after the 2021 school year. Jamel Fair, and that was a great look from three. And right now Baruch, two of seven from beyond the arc. They're still shooting 45%. Lehman at 55%. Batista. Now Batista relocates and buries the is. three. Gian yeah. Batista for the first time shoots it at 30% from the on the arc. And that's what I'm saying, Ralph. I, I just love the fact he's not forcing it. He gets a good look and he sets his feet and knocks it down. A CUNY player of the year, just the third in Lehman history. And there's a steal from Batista stepping in front of Purison. Yep, good effort right there. He, he anticipated that pass into the post, got his hand on it and drew the foul. See it here, there's no one within five feet of him, lets it go. Boy, you can see that follow through in the replay. Gian Batista. Well, what Steve Shulman says that makes him special is his compete level has skyrocketed. Not necessarily in his skill set, but he gets it that he has to play harder than guys in the other team. In 2020, he didn't have that. He had a good year, averaging 17.7 rebounds, but he's gone to All-American level is what you figure he's going to have for his awards at the end of the year to go to the next level. He throws the lob, and reading it well on the back end was Jamel Fair. Reese, nice bounce pass. Guy stuffed by Batista. Batista pushes transition. Fernandez turned down to three. It came out to Batista straight away. 
Adrisu, offensive Adrisu. rebound. Yeah. Right where he needs to be and puts it back up. You know, I, what makes Batista great is his attitude, Ralph. You know, when he won the Play of the Year award, the thing that he said that really impressed me, it's not what you're capable of, it's what you're willing to do. And when you watch him play, he's willing to do everything. Get on the floor, rebound the ball, facilitate, play the whole game, and be a basketball player. And there Reese. he is there again, taking a charge. That's what a leader does. He puts a team on his back, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a bucket. It could be a charge route, and you see him right here. That's a good up fake, but he's there all the way drawing the foul. Jim Batista taking the game over in a variety of ways. Uh, Gian Batista's story is is fantastic. He was at Monroe, the Bronx Community College. Very good player there, Sean, and assistant coach Gene Martial, who was a former player at Lehman. He actually yep. played on the 2018 team. That's right. That we broadcast down assistant of Steve Shulman. He went to a Hostos Monroe Bronx game in 2018 and fell in love with Batista watching him. He was there to watch another player, and Gian happened to have friends at Lehman College that played volleyball and he came to campus many times already. And that was part of the recruiting story. And Lehman was able to get him away from an offer from Division II American International. But he wanted to stay home. He has a brother with special needs that he takes care of. Mm. And wants to take Lehman, a program from his hometown of the Bronx, to the NCAA tournament. You know, that's just a, the way that he plays is a reflection of his character. You know, to stay home and take care of a family member. You know, to come out here and, and, and to lead by example. I mean, you know, he could come down and be a little bit more selfish. But, you know, for him, you can tell as a leader if you told us about, you know, and that's why, guys, we call Ralph Five Hour Energy. He has, like, the entire story. You know, for him to have his team out in the playground playing in the summer, you know, to have them, you know, in different gyms during the COVID time, you know, he, he's just showing his quality well-earned Player of the Year award, you know, for Jim Batista. And, you know, kudos to Lehman for recruiting him away from a scholarship. It's amazing. Zone look out of Baruch and Juan uh, Fernandez makes them pay with a three. And you know, Ralph, that, that means something. Sometimes a scholarship isn't the right situation for everyone, you know? You come to a school, you're close to your family, close to home, you build your character, you become a leader, you know? and you know, there's nothing better in, in some instances where you can play where you're needed the most. Oh, there's an offensive foul, another one on Baruch. Mohammed Guy on the offensive rebound, and that got John Alisi yeah, out of his chance. that was a tough call. That was a tough call. Lehman is on this 9-2 to two run right now. And that's the fourth offensive uh, charge that uh, Lehman has taken. Yeah, John Alisi mentioned... Lehman takes a lot of charges. Yes. Uh, but, th but this is already four is, is at a high rate in the first half. No doubt. Now Batista looks to get into the low post against Reese. Adrisu shoots over the top, misses the three. Batista the rebound. Out it comes to Fernandez. Now Fernandez with his feet set. Long rebound at Drizu. Oh, and then reading the passing lane by Shrani, uh. and Fernandez beats him to the loose ball. Still time here on the shot clock for Lehman. Entry to Gathers, and Gathers could not get that to go. And we'll get a foul on the rebounding action against Baruch. Good call by the ref. Kurosek that time. Pushed him slightly in the back. And Lehman now stretching their legs a bit, now up 11. It's the second foul on Jack Reese. So here's Marquise Johnson. Out of the high school for health opportunities. Nice player to come off the bench. Or rather, actually, he is a Philadelphia kid. And they go to a smaller lineup at times. 
playing Johnson sort of at a five spot. He misses the free throw, gathers, and it'll be gathers that is going to get called for the over the back. So that is his second. And that's 17 fouls, so we go to the other end here, end of the first half. So Neil Purisic to shoot the front end of a one and one at 73%. Moving out the team, shoots 70% from the free throw line. Purisic watched his older brother, Ines Purisic, play at Brooklyn College in the class of 2010, winning a CUNY championship. Would like to add another to the family. He has eight, and Baruch cuts it to 10. But well, Lehman has separated. They've led by as many as 12. They got 13 early first half points from Will Feldman, who's on the bench for a while with two fouls. Off the offensive rebound, the tip misses. Puristic the rebound in traffic. Final 50 seconds, first half. Bajrami's pass deflected, stolen by Idrisu. Idrisu ah. goes behind the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Idrisu. Wow, he had a, super he, smooth. He had a big game in the quarterfinal against Brooklyn with a career high 27. And you can see why Lehman is so explosive. It, Steve Shulman has talked about how we are so well connected and they've become much more than the big two of Batista and Gathers. Yeah, Mo just showing his versatility at the top of that zone too at 6-4, lots of size, and can also put it on the deck and make moves. Fair missing a three, Purisic, final seconds. And the blocking foul underneath against Lehman. First one, first one, and that was a good call because it was inside the restricted area. That was number 25, Lennox de Grace. With 4.2, Purisic to shoot two free throws. That's in the act of shooting. Bearcats in their fifth final in seven years. Program has won three championships. Last in 2019. Two for Purisic. So with 4.2, Baruch has 17 fouls, so they have to be careful here. And Lehman will have to go the length of the floor. We'll see if Batista can get his wheels going up the floor. He gets the screen, he has the heave. Batista misses, it's a 10 point game at half. Lehman with the late first half run separating after a Will Feldman had major damage early with 13 points in the first eight minutes. 39-29, Lehman over Baruch in the CUNY championship game at the half. We're coming back and we'll show you the CUNY All-Star Award Ceremony presentation that'll take place here at Bitcourt, and then come back for the start of the second half with first half statistics, 39-29, Lehman leads Baruch in the CUNY final. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today.
How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. And now let's meet this year's first team All-Stars. Our first honoree is a guard from Houston, Texas, representing the Baruch College Bearcats, number 11, Adnan Mashrami. Mashrami earns first team honors for her second straight season, totaling double figures in 18 of 29 games on the offensive and this season for the Bearcats. Congratulations. Our next All-Star is a guard from New York, New York, representing the York College Cardinals, number five, Quran Dublin. Dublin's first team distinction is the program's first since 2014. Congratulations, Quran. And our next honoree is a forward from Brooklyn, New York, representing Lehman College, number 23, Isaiah Gethers. Isaiah was a two-time player of the week and Kuniak's leading scorer this season, and you'll see him later on this evening on the court for the Lehman College Lightning. Congratulations, Isaiah. Our next honoree is a forward from Queens, New York, representing Hunter College, number 22, Luka Jakic. This season, Luka lost 10 double doubles and ranked fourth in the conference in total rebounds and 11th nationally in offensive and rebounds per game. Congratulations. Our next All-Star is a forward from Bayshore, New York, from the John Jay Bloodhounds, number 15, Angel Rivera. This season, Rivera led the Bloodhounds in scoring and steals while finishing second in assists, blocks, three-pointers, and field goal percentage. Congratulations. And now for our major award winners, the 2022 QDX Sportsmanship Award winner is a guard from Brooklyn, New York, representing the Peru College Bearcats, and you'll also see him on the court later this evening, number 22, Michael Richards. Congratulations, Michael, and good luck. The 2022 Kuniak Rookie of the Year is a guard from the Bronx, New York, and he represents the Met Rivers Cougars, number 10, Andre Evans, Jr. This season, Andre was a four-time Kuniak Rookie of the Week and became the first Cougar to earn Rookie of the Year honors since 2018. Andre Evans, Jr., ladies and gentlemen. The 2022 Kuniak Player of the Year is a guard from Santiago in the Dominican Republic from the Lima College Lightning. He'll be here a little later on. Number 15, Gian Batista. This season, Batista was the three-time Kuniak Player of the Week and became the first Lightning player to earn Player of the Year honors since 2006. Congratulations, Gian Batista. And the 2022 Kuniak Coach of the Year from Lima College is Coach Steven Schulman. Steven Schulman earns the Kenya Coach of the Year honors for the fifth time in his career after leading the Lightning to the first regular season title since 2018. Let's give all of our winners a congratulations and a big round of applause. Nice going, gentlemen, and we wish you the very best of luck. 2021-22 Cuniac Championships are brought to you by Pepsi. Pepsi, the official soft drink of the CUNY Athletic Conference. The Hospital for Special Surgery, U.S.'s number one hospital for orthopedics, proud to be the official hospital of the CUNY Athletic Conference. USS, the University Student Senate, a proud sponsor of the CUNY Athletic Conference. Thank you for providing our students with the platform to help shape the city University of New York. Health First, we'd like to thank our newest sponsor, Health First, New York's largest not-for-profit insurer for being a proud sponsor of CUNYAC Community College and Senior College Championship. Hometown Ticketing. Thank you to Hometown Ticketing, the official ticketing provider of the CUNY Athletic Conference. 
and Bob McCloskey Insurance, a longtime supporter of the CUNY Athletic Conference, the official athletic insurance provider of the NJCAA.
Welcome back, folks. Second half coming up shortly. We have Lehman and Baruch, a 10-point game at the half. Here with Baruch coach John Elise, you're down 10 as the, as the second half is getting ready to begin. What do you want to see from your team coming right out of the break? Yeah, we've got to win more of the effort plays. Uh, I think they're just getting too many offensive rebounds, extra possessions. Uh, they're living in transition, which was the biggest focus for us coming into the game. So uh, we've just got to do a better job with, with executing. And now as soon as the second half gets going offensively, what do you want to see differently from both Adnan and Emil? Yeah, we got to keep the ball moving. I think we're, you know, it's getting stuck at times and it's allowing them to load their defense up to the ball. We just got to keep it moving and trust in the next man and, and you know, got to just finish and make shots. And last question for you. If you can limit the three-point game of leaving in the second half, do you think that could go a long way toward this double-digit comeback? Yeah, look, I mean, you know, you got to pick your poison with Lehman. The biggest thing for us is to keep them out of the lane, out of transition. So we're willing to live with some threes. Got to do a better job getting out a little quicker. But, uh, you know, to their credit, they made the shots. We just got to defend a little tighter. That's Coach John Alisi. I'm Zach Weiss. We're throwing it back to Ralph. Second half coming up momentarily. All right, thank you, Zach. 39-29 here. Leitman, the top seed leading Baruch as we look at the first half numbers. As John Alisi just talked about, the effort plays. It is Lehman just plus two on the glass, but seven offensive rebounds so far. And the transition is perhaps where Lehman got going. And some open threes from Will Feldman. Feldman leads the all players with 13 points for Lehman. Five of six from the floor, three of three from beyond the arc. Meanwhile, Baruch, two of nine from three. And Baruch shooting a respectable 41%, but they're going to have to bring down the Lehman numbers. Lehman at 50% at this juncture at the half. So back here at the table, Ralph Norchik now welcoming in Raymond Thornhill, Senior Manager of Community Engagement with a new sponsor here at the CUNY Athletic Conference. Health First, they're the official wellness partner and a nonprofit. Raymond, welcome. Welcome to CUNY Athletic Championship. Uh, tell me uh, about making the decision with Health First to join the CUNY Athletic Conference. Why is that a great partnership? Well, we just thought that it was a great opportunity for us to educate students through student athletics. Um, we thought that beyond health and people having health coverage is also understanding the challenges of managing their mental health, lifestyles, and sports. It's all connected. Mm -hmm. So it's a very important ask. Yeah. And, uh, and you guys are the official partner, not, uh, not it's a healthcare company, but the official wellness partner. What are some of the tactics and ways wellness is much different than health insurance? Right. So wellness is uh, uh, lifestyle, education, uh, you know, paying attention to your mental health and all these things that are challenging us uh, as we go through the times that we're in, the pandemic. So it's very important that we live healthy lifestyles, and it's more than just the insurance part is the, is the lifestyles. And we have to start with our students and our student population and teach them that. Yeah, and, and these are young adults, of course, that are going through the most stressful time period uh, that perhaps they ever will, uh, what we've been through. What's the main message that you've been communicating to this particular college age group? Well, our message is um, definitely paying attention to your wellness, um, tapping in with your wellness, understanding that your lifestyle and how and what you do and what we're experiencing, we can get through it together, collectively. Um, and you know, it's just a commitment overall to our overall health. And tell us about your engagement with uh, with Health First, uh, getting your message out there. What are you guys doing? Uh, are we going to see once kids get back to CUNY campuses more consistently and at championship and athletic events? Uh, uh, what, what's that overall engagement to, to get people to see what you guys are about? Well, our objective is to be on these campuses to teaching and giving the opportunity to students to have access to, to, to health care. Um, teaching them how to navigate through the health delivery system, you know, and also giving them uh, uh, mental health classes and a lot of different nutrition, um, all kind of wellness as a, as a holistic approach. Interesting. And of course, here we are athletically where, uh, where these athletes already have so much on their plate in terms of stress. Uh, what, what's the more, what are the more common programs that you guys offer? You mentioned the, the mental health classes that you offer. What are some of the other programs that you offer for the regular student that is working a job, uh, part-time, going to class, uh, helping out their families in a lot of ways uh, here in New York City? They're pulled in a lot of different directions. Right, right. So what we're trying to do is uh, provide virtual education. 
um, and making it easy and accessible for the masses that do that. So, mm -hmm. sounds like. And you're available online. Tell us about how people can contact you guys uh, as they start to see your signage all across the CUNY Athletic Conference uh, and campuses. Right, so we'll, we'll have our reps on campus. Um, we also can reach us at healthfirstnewyork.com. Health uh, we're online and, you know, any time you'll see one of our brochures, We'll have QR codes. They can scan and get a, 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 a Yeah, look forward to seeing you guys at future yep. championships. That will be fully packed. Normally, there's a lot more people here in the building. Raymond, and here's a steal and a takeaway, and an easy layup for Jamel Fair. So after a pure sick rebound and put back, Fair with a bucket, and it's a quick 4-0 start for Baruch, and it's a six-point game. Raymond Thornhill, thank you so much for stopping by, Senior Manager of Community Engagement at Health First, the new official wellness partner of the CUNY Athletic Conference. Thank you for being here, thank and you. enjoy the game. Welcome yes, to CUNY Basketball. Very much. It's, it's an honor to be here. Miss John inside, and Purisic is able to grab the rebound. Raymond, thank you. 39-33, Lehman. Michael Richards back on the floor for Baruch. He sat for a large stretch after picking up his second foul. Majrami, he'll step and knock down the three. So Baruch has opened up with a 7-0 start to this second half. Majrami up to 11. And Baruch has completely changed the rest of this game in 90 seconds. Not sure what John said, but whatever it is, it's working. They, they've come out on fire. Isaiah gathers no. Lennox DeGrasse is there for the rebound. Lennox DeGrasse, while we have a moment, the 28-year-old spent seven years in the U.S. Marines, deployed three times in the Republic of Georgia and in the Middle East in Bahrain. We thank him for his service. He is on the floor in the center for Lehman. Shot off the glass, misses, and Will Feldman rebounds. Also want to shout out the other couple special people, Joe Trebuzio Jr. and Alex Metcalf. They are watching tonight's CUNY Championships from down in Jacksonville. They are both members of the U.S. Navy. Joe T. Jr., we've met him several times, Sean. He would come to CUNY Championships because dad, Joe Trebuzio Sr., is a longtime public address announcer and MC of CUNY Championships, so we wish Joe T and Alex Metcalf well as they watch tonight from Jacksonville. There's something very sacred about serving, you know, uh, God, God himself loves soldiers, man. <laughs> and I'm down with him. So very, very sacred responsibility to try to protect people and, and to protect families. So I have the ultimate respect for men and women who do that. And put themselves in harm's way. Yeah. Meanwhile, an offensive foul against Lehman Rook has opened up the second half, three of five. Other notable first half numbers, nine turnovers by the Bearcats. They were led in scoring by Emil Pires, six, 10 points. He jumps out of the double team with the pass. Jamel Fair will take the pull up nice. and get that to fall. Yeah, he's come out with a purpose. That nice little pick to start it off. Little buttercup gumdrop mid-ranger right there. And Baruch right now is right back in this game, Ralph, as we expected. We expect this one to go down to the wire. Both regular season meetings were in the balance with two minutes left. The home team won each game, despite Steve Shulman feeling the team that lost probably played better, but the home team just used that edge at home and ended up winning by four points apiece. As Feldman misses a three. This is on a neutral floor on the campus of City College, uh, Manhattan's Upper West Side, 125th Street. Bajrami, he was fouled. Wow. That was a deep look, and Adrisu late on the closeout. Real late on that closeout, and not under control. You know, those are the things that, you know, as a, especially in this environment, that coaches preach, stay on your feet, close out fundamentally, you know, challenge that shot when you are in control. So Adnan Bajrami, the last time these two teams played 
it ended up being Bajrami against Batista in a lot of ways. Bajrami went for a career high 39 points on 14 of 23. He had seven threes that game as well. Seven of 12. Yep. Gian Batista had 31 with 11 and 10 assists, a triple double. And Bajrami makes all three free throws. We are tied at 41. And now Fair, a little too handsy on Batista, picks up the foul. And by the way, early in this second half, while we finished up the interview with Raymond Thornhill, Feldman had picked up his third. Batista. Batista takes a tough fall away. And good contest there for Baruch. Richard steps through. Bajrami, that's a tough fall tough away. Shot. Super tough shot, and he, he was in control the whole time. Like the way he attacked on the angle, and then that nice little turntable to use the glass in the mid range. Timeout Lehman, Baruch has erupted to start the second half. They lead 43-41. It's a 14-2 start for the Bearcats. Baruch coming out on fire, and you know what you like, the defensive intensity really is what you know, has them in the lead right now. They came out on the, you know, got a steal, got a put back, you know, controlling the boards, and now they're taking those shots in the paint and making them count. The Bearcats have been a bit streaky this year, but they played a very good non-conference as well. Lost at the buzzer to open up the season against Lancaster Bible. Overtime loss at Pratt at home to St. Joe's Long Island, but they were seven and four into the new year. Then they went out and beat Farmingdale State. Road win at Drew. They beat Lehman, and they put together a 10-game winning streak. And then after losing their last three of the regular season, John Alisi has seen his team not overreact to the end of the regular season and that losing streak. Instead, they put together two great games in the quarterfinal and then a victory over John Jay or rather the John Jay quarterfinal win and then the victory over York in the semifinals to put themselves back in another championship game. On fire right now, coming out 14 to two, Ralph, on the Lehman Lightning. I definitely want to bottle whatever that halftime talk was that John gave and, and sell it. <laughs> mm -hmm. to every coach right now in the conference. And we'll see the response from Steve Shulman's Lehman team. Batista, look backside. Johnson not ready to shoot. And it's a shot clock violation coming out of the timeout. Johnson was not aware. Just good, solid defense by Baruch. Lehman making a, a rare error there, not knowing that the time, oblivious to the clock. That's their ninth turnover of the game. Actually, 10. 10th turnover. Richards trying to hang and hit, could not. And Feldman. Feldman and Purisic get tied up. And indeed, it is a tie-up. And Feldman and Burisic, nice sign of sportsmanship there. There's two guys playing hard. Yeah, that's all it was. Feldman talking about he's grabbing his arm. I didn't really see that one. But it's good that he's holding his head and just playing ball, because they need him out there on the floor.
Johnson on the entry. Isaiah gathers, mm. muscles it up, missed the shot, and look at Richards grab that rebound. Rook doing a much better job on the defensive boards this half. Feldman playing with three, got caught in the air. Sean Donnellan continuing to work. And Batista on the push. He's got five points, five rebounds, eight assists, but not yet the substantial impact I think we expected coming in. Mostly, as John Alisi said, we have to keep this Lehman team out of transition, and his team has uh, pretty much probably been a grade a plus in that department tonight. No, no, no doubt. They haven't gotten any easy shots, or uh, I believe they have two shots in transition, two points. So, you know, mission accomplished so far. Good. There is Batista Good hanging shot. over the defense. Good shot. And that's a tough shot to get in that lane, like seven to, you know, five to seven feet from the rim in no man's land. He used the glass really well. Officially, fast break points is. Lehman with six. John telling Zach Weiss of the half that okay, six Lehman, points. Yeah, okay. Lehman was getting mm -hmm. too much in transition. Right. I think he wanted to be zero. <laughs> as there's a charge, another one against Baruch. So I've lost count. I think uh, that's, that's five. Right. I, I read it wrong. Baruch with two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that is now five charges drawn by Lehman tonight. Yes. I mean, you can see why these teams are here, Ralph. You, you see it, you know, on both ends of the floor. You know, both teams have excellent, excellently coached, you know, good defensive principles, patient on offense, share the ball well. And now Batista on cue, perhaps starting to sense he needs to get more aggressive. And that's what leaders do. They pass it when they need to, and they score when they need to. Good under control elbow jump shot. The charge was on Michael Richards of Baruch. That was his third. Jack Reese back on for Baruch. And this will be a foul underneath. <laughs> I'm, you, I'm looking at Baruch. They, they look like the sort of guys, like if you go into Queens or Brooklyn, they're the guys that like are on the court and they don't get off. Mm -hmm. And you just have to bring, you know, a real strong crew to get them off the court. Yeah, you better, you better, you better bring some dudes yeah. to get them to leave. Yeah, yeah, because they played together for so long and they know, you know, they can just look at each other and know what they're doing on the floor. Nice sick. Attacking Adrisu in scores and we're tied again. Batista got the screen up high, and then he's fouled. Whoa, that was that was a blindside screen on Jack Reese, set by Marquise Johnson of Lehman, and Reese is shaken up. Yeah, he didn't see it at all. I'm not sure if his man called it out, but he ran he ran into that screen full. See it right here. You can see it. Not aware of it at all. Oh, yeah, right to the jaw. And it, and it was no ill will there, too. That was just a good, strong screen. But I think the officials are going to come over and take a look. Yep. Yeah, take a look. You can turn it around. All right, so our officials are asking for another look. And let's show them that. Not the screen. So here was the screen, and they want you to roll it ahead. That's a good, solid screen. That's what we want. We want to play at the rim. We want to play at the rim. Meanwhile, Reese was able to get up and walk off the floor under his own power. Another look. No, that was the earlier play. They wanted the continuation of what we just had this foul a second ago after the screen. So it keeps after the screen, the play, 
Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't have it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it will be a common foul. They were checking for maybe some extra contact on Batista being knocked down. And meanwhile, Reese is kind of just trying to walk it off over on the corner by the bench. Jack Reese is a tough customer, as we said. Probably the best role player John Alisi has ever had. Uh, they joke about him that he doesn't need to score the impact the game, and he is fearless. And he took a jarring hit on the screen from Marquise Johnson. Yeah, Jack is ready to play right now. You know, he just got, it's like one of those things where you get surprised, you get hit. You know, you might hit the floor, but you just get back up and be like, good shot. Now I'm going to come at you even harder. Well, he'll be back in the game. All right, let's see what our officials, Paul Toomey, will have to say. All right, we have we have a different look okay. to show them. Yeah. We're looking Mike. at Mike. we're looking at the contact, I guess, on Gian Batista. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't, we don't need you don't need it. it. Um, we're gonna go flagrant one on Lehman 21. It's gonna be two shots and the ball on the knee. So it'll be a flagrant one on Baruch's Emil Purisic. So let's watch again, just kind of that last contact showing the grab. Right, it's the grab there. He grabbed him and then kind of threw him down uh, at the end of it. So that's a good call by the ref. That's so why Steve Schulman was up and yelling. He, he saw it. Referees got a better angle of it and got the call right. As he stood 81%. He leads the conference in free throws attempted and made, but he makes or misses the first. The foul on Purisic is his second, and now Lehman, after this free throw, will keep the ball. So Batista is up to 10. Lehman back in front and possession. Well, the Lightning, Sean, all the year, they have been dynamite in transition. Pardon the pun, they've been lightning in transition but yet they have not been able to find a way to kind of ignite this game. And that's a credit to Baruch's defensive scheme. You can tell, you know, right away that they're jetting back, getting back on D. They're doing a great job, too, making sure that if they don't get the rebound offensively, that they have a man back or two. So they're really slowing Lehman down. And that comes from, you know, on the box outs. You're not letting guys get clear rebounds and just, you know, launching, you know, going up. Uh, up the court quickly. They get a block on Batista. Basrami. And that'll be a little brush foul against Marquise Johnson. Lehman up to five team fouls here, 12.25 left. Yeah, Nod looks locked in. Adnan, excuse me, he looks locked in. Locked in. He, you know, he, he, he looks free. He looks like his mind is in it. So far, it's had a great game. And now the steal, the takeaway, Feldman ahead, Batista, touch pass for Gathers. Mo Idrisu, and Batista finds the rebound. Isaiah Gathers, nine points in this championship game. He'll try to step back Tough three shot. and rattles it down. Shot. Real patient there, and he didn't give that up. He wanted that shot, Ralph. He took his time to get to that open spot and hit the three. 37% from three. One of the most improved players Steve Shulman says he's ever coached. Truly a self-made star. Donnellan missed a three, and Batista tied up with Richards on the rebound. Yep, good call. And the foul is Batista in the yep. rebounding action. Yeah, Richards had inside position and came over his back. Purisic, after hesitating, then misses the three. He's capable, 35% from three this year. So Lehman by four. They led by as many as 12 in the first half as Batista airballs a three. That's unusual. Yeah, it wasn't set on that shot. But it would be, you know, good. Lehman Feldman 
13 points in the first half. You know, try to get him involved again in the offense here. Richards knifes his way through. Ball on the floor. We'll get another tie up. Yep, and Arrow will keep it here with Baruch. And look who's back in the game. Oh, yeah. Jack Reese. I was watching Jack on the sideline. He was just shaking that off like a boxer in the corner. You know, the trainer was like, you know, sitting. He was on the bench, like on the stool. He's back, ready to, to knock people out. Oh, Batista <laughs> the takeaway. Look out, he runs the floor. The trail man gathers, uh, but then he had it taken away by Donlin. Great steal by Donlin. Wow. Sprints back and just snatches the ball away from Batista in the scrum. And that's 17 fouls on Lehman here with about 11 minutes left. So this is trouble for the Lightning oh, as yeah. Sean Donlin goes to the free throw line. Baruka, excellent free throw shooting team at 70%. Donlin at 77% at the line. Pushed into the starting lineup in January. It was expected to be a big piece anyway. Hasn't shot the ball great recently, just 33% from the floor, five and a half points, a couple of rebounds, but he does so many other things in managing Baruch offensively. So he's got two. And it's 49-47 Lehman. So far, the two lightning stars of Gathers and Batista have combined for 22. For the season, they average 24 between them. And there's another offensive foul. And this will be a moving screen against Lehman. Yeah. Marquise Johnson picking up number four on Lehman. So the game is been grinding away to a halt, and Lehman continues to lead, but right now the Lightning just frustrated as they've not yet been able to play their style, and credit the Bearcats, the things that John Alisi talked about, Lehman at their best when they play free and loose. How can Steve Shulman here in the Lehman Huddle get his team to play free and loose? You know, I'd like to see them up their defensive pressure. I think that they can generate some offense off of turnovers, you know, get get in them, maybe full court, defensive pressure, and, and, and get in the passing lanes and make some things happen. It's been a pretty, it's, a, it's been an even game, you know, leaming up by two. But when you look at the stats, you know, 12 turnovers, both teams. Points in the paint is 22-20 in favor of Lehman. You can see right here. Yeah, our officials are having a look at some of the other contact underneath. It looks like on the out of the last out of bounds play. It's on this end. Uh, keep running. Oh, I think it's on the screen here. Oh no. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Yeah, they're looking for an earlier play. So as they scroll back, we have 10.38 left. Lehman 49-47 over Baruch in the CUNY men's basketball championship game. The Lightning looking for the program's second championship. The first came in 2004, early in Steve Shulman's tenure. Baruch is in the final for the fifth time in seven years, looking for the program's fourth championship. Okay. On that last shot. Yeah, this is the play they're looking at. Gathers. Right, okay. with the three or a two. And indeed, that looks pretty good. Yeah, looks like it was a three. Yeah. So indeed, that counted. They made it 49 45. 
and it's now 49-47. Great job by our crew, Ben Talbot and company, to be able to find that, producing a live game, and then helping the officials out with replays upon request. Kurasik, the sturdy DeGrasse defending, out to Donlin. It was halfway down. Gathers, spins through Bajrami, missed the shot. He got it back, and then denied by Bajrami. And Reese goes and gets it. Jack Reese racing ahead. It would not go down. Batista the other way. Batista. Good call. And a block against Good Baruch. Call. That's the, kind of the first fast break action we've had this game. Batista, you know, showing dexterity there, avoiding the foul. You see it right here. Goes into his Euro step game and gets to the side just enough to get the block call. Lehman averaging 83 points a game. But this game has not been to that kind of tempo so far. And Batista makes the free throw. Jono's looking at half to try to find, has anybody ever gotten a championship game triple-double? And Gian Batista's got 11, nine rebounds, eight assists. Ah. 9.39 left. Of course, they'll want to win the championship, but there's been a lot of great performances in the CUNY final. But in a conference championship game at any level, to have a triple-double is something spectacular. Oh, of course. I mean, he's had three for the, for the year so far. Had one in the semifinal. So, you know, again, just playing his game all around, making his teammates better, playing within himself. Muhammad Guy. Tough shot. And he steps through and scores. Yeah, Muhammad. He knew exactly what he was doing there. Very skillful. He put the ball below the defender's arm and used his shoulder to hook around to get the layup. Lennox to grass. And the Marine takes the shot. That's off. Gather is able to rebound. Feldman has only taken one shot in the second half after he came out on fire. 13 points in Ooh, nine minutes. Block. Gathers, shot is blocked. He gets it back with hey. five on the timer. He misses the finger roll, but Batista is there for the rebound. Timeout, Baruch. Yeah, he's putting the team on his back right now. Batista. Gathers going with the little left, a little short, but Batista fights his way in there, goes up strong for two on the offensive rebound. Lehman continues to lead by four. Who will make the last run between these two? Winner off to the NCAA tournament. If Lehman loses, their season comes to an end. They are not a part of the ECA scene. The ECAC tournament is a kind of a northeast area, Division Three NIT. Right. There was a question whether or not that would happen. Lehman is not going to participate in it. They are no longer a member of the ECAC. Uh, not sure if Baruch is or not. And hopefully in the future, the ECAC will be back full bore. That was always another additional opportunity. Typically a three-round tournament. Eight more teams that get a chance to extend their seasons for a weekend and serves as the local area NIT for men's and women's basketball. Purisic shoots over to Grass and scores nice. again. So Emil Purisic has 16 to pace Baruch. And again, Muhammad Guy showing his uh, quality there. 
finding Pirisic in the lane for two. Batista's fall away. So Baruch has prevented him from having the explosive game. Now the game very much to the Bearcats liking, but yet they trail by two. Guy, that was for the tie. Batista in the low box. And he got his man up in the air and another Baruch foul. I like the adjustment Coach Schumann has made, putting Batista now on the box and letting him shorten his game up, you know, to get touches. Third on Pirisic. So G and Batista to shoot two more. So he's at 14, 10, and eight assists. He's led the conference. In assist all year, he's fifth in the country as he misses that first free throw. Yeah, you know the game's getting serious when the crowd starts standing. <laughs> A limited crowd allowed here at CCNY. Players, coaches, and staff allowed two tickets apiece. Every different CUNY facility in the championship had different rules from campus to campus. But we're happy to have some crowd representing tonight to watch this one. Fair got out of traffic. Yep. Leaving in the 3-2 zone against Baruch. Been in it now for a couple of minutes. Donlin. Got his own miss. And Sean uh -huh. Donlin is fouled and won. Teach your guys to follow their shot. Sean on balance takes a shot a little short. Follows it and gets the putback. You see it right here again off the shot fake under control. Eyes on the rim. Good play by Donnelly. Plays a lot bigger than a six foot frame. Up and down freshman season where he started 30 games. But he's taken a huge step forward. He might be the most improved Bearcat player since the last time they played in 2020. That's four rebounds. That's second for Baruch to Parasek with nine. Ajrami got into the passing lane. Tell you, Ralph, we just knew it had to be this way, right? <laughs> it had to be this way. Back and forth we go, man. It's been... You know, these are two teams that truly represent like the essence of New York City. You know, when you look at them, they could play this game out in the playground and it would be a great game too, Ralph. I mean, under control, you know, tough play. Idrisu ah. carves his way through the lane, but could not secure control and left it short. Donlin the leave, fair. Baruch a chance to go in front for the first time of the second half. It's good discipline by Fair not to take that shot right away. Bajrami a tough step back. Oh. And this will be Lehman ball. It's a tough shot by Bajrami. I think he would take that one back. Lehman won for their last nine. Feldman nearly let it trickle through and be an over and back. Isaiah gathers. Tough. As Lennox the grass muscling up the miss and put back. Yep, Lennox saw that coming. He's right in the right place at the right time for the put back. A graduate of the High School for American Studies class of 2009. And you like you gotta like Schulman's logic. Can't take the soldier off the field right now when the battle is on. Fernandez rebounds and DeGrasse 
is a, a great help side defender. They love his stability, his calmness when there's chaos. Like a soldier. That's right. Fernandez uh. misses the follow on the Adrisu three, but then he's knocked down in the rebounding action. Two consecutive times now, Baruch having trouble on the offensive boards, and it's costing them. Fourth on Jamel Fair. He's the first Baruch player with four. Gian Batista and Marquise Johnson have four apiece for Lehman. So Fair will sit and Richards back in. Yeah, had to take him out for personal. Lehman continues with the zone look. Jack Reese fires. Richards battles for the rebound. And they'll say it's going to be Lehman <laughs> ball. I guess Richards touched it last. Yeah. Now officials, Mike Evans. Yeah, they might get and together on Ray, that one. Ray Adams will gather together. That's right. Good call. And they'll change the call and keep it with Baruch. Good call. That time, the grass, he's the one who touched it. He pushed him, and he ball went off of his arm. A good correction. Pirasic out of the high post. He'll go to the free throw line. You know, Baruch's interior passing is special. You know, they really understand how to slip the ball between the cracks of the zone. And the players don't try to do too much. They just go to the rim, you know, looking for contact, but also looking to finish. And Pirosik has done that. He's perhaps been the most efficient Bearcat. 16 points on six of seven, 10 rebounds. And he was perfect at the line prior to that miss. And meanwhile, here with 4.36 left, now is the time for Steve Schulman to bring back Gian Batista with four fouls. One of two. So Batista now off ball. Looks opposite Mo Idrisu. Batista the rebound. The kick out, Isaiah Gathers. Long rebound, DeGrasse, and he's fouled. It'll be free throws for Lehman. Lehman is just like the animals on the boards right now, Ralph. Ball is up in the air, 50-50 ball, and they're going to get it. The last four times down the floor, Baruch has not gotten a clean rebound. It's gone the Lightning's way. So here's Lennox DeGrasse from the age of 18 through 25, a U.S. Marine. Then he jumped into school and he attended upstate Hudson Valley Community College. 2018, 2020, he was at a school called Paul Smith's College, way upstate New York, playing basketball. As he misses the front end of a one and one, they heard he was doing well. Steve Schulman happens to be the athletic director at the High School for American Studies as his full-time gig. And they found a center. Uh. Purisic stepping through. And he's telling his teammates, feed me, I got this. Tough shot, too. He turned in the air on that one, Ralph, to face the rim and complete that shot. Gathers through uh. Bajrami. Wow. I'm looking at him, I'm thinking he's gonna, you know, draw a charge. That's a great play by Gathers. You see him here on the drive. Look how he slows his body down to avoid the contact and draw the foul. Just good offensive basketball. 
And you know what I like about these guys? Nobody here is looking for a ref call. They're looking to complete the shot and get the bucket. And that's the way to play the game. Isaiah gathers as, his, as a freshman, was at Monroe, the Bronx Community College. Played just five games there. One start, couple of points a game. Had his appendix taken out, missed the season. Transferred to Lehman, started to become a nice player at 15 a game. And a guy that could be the CUNY player of the year next year. Oh, yeah, Isaiah's had a great game, real smooth. He's got 14 to steal by Batista. Transition for Lehman, but Richards knocks it away. Michael Richards the steal. Up ahead, Emil Pirasic. Got caught in the air. Bajrami looks opposite. Sean Donnellan. Hey! Big three for Donnellan. We're tied at 59. Bajrami learned his lesson. That last shot that he took, Rob, was a bad shot. This time under control. Skip pass to Donnellan, who hits the three. See it right here, he could have took that shot. Jump hook pass to his man on the other side. Count it, bucket. And how about Michael Richards before that, Sean? John Alisi has said he's the best defensive player in CUNY. How about we throw this out? You know, there is no CUNY Defensive Player of the Year award yet. Yes. But I nominate there should be. It's about time. I, I agree with you. I mean, defense is what championships are made of, and I'm sure that's something that Zach Ikovic is going to make happen for real. Request sent out by Michael Richards. They are 14 in the sky blue. John Alisi says he's the best guy defensively in the conference. So quiet, but he's become very vocal before the CUNY tournament when Baruch had dropped three straight games to close out the regular season. And instead, they have rallied and played their best basketball in the tournament. And you know what, Ralph? I think that's the second time that it's been a steal and then a steal back, you know, by Baruch. So, yeah, you see him right here on Feldman. He's really, you know, in him. Good call. And Good Batista call. with Reese hounding him. Good call. Yeah, that's Jack's four. And as we've seen it now for a better part of a decade, Sean, Baruch, their culture brings out these kinds of defensive demons on a daily basis. <laughs> yes. You know, if you look back in their history and you look at their defensive stats, for the, over the past 10 years, Baruch, not just in the conference, in the country, has been one of the top, you know, 10, 15, 25 teams in scoring defense and in defense overall. So it's just in, you know, Baruch's DNA. And look at the score, you know, it's under 70 right now with three minutes to go. This is a Baruch type of contest. You know, Lehman averages 80 points a game. Batista one of two at the line again. Lehman's hurt themselves a little bit with their free throw shooting. Here's Bajrami. Missed a three, that would have been for the lead. And it's gonna go back to yeah. Lehman. And having said that, Sean, that's why this Baruch offensive team has stood out. Their best scoring team since, uh, since indefinitely, since at least through 2006, they've never averaged 79 points a game. Yep. Batista almost had his pocket picked again from behind. Feldman on the entry. And the denial on Adrisu by Reese. Man, I love these refs, man. They're not letting any, like, little baby fouls be called in this instance. You got to earn a bucket. And if it's a foul, they're going to call it. Great job so far. Batista has Adrisu underneath, uh -huh. and Adrisu fires it up and in. Wow, how did he get that off? Wow. Trisu just snaking his way in and falling down hits the layup. He literally threw it <laughs> at the backboard. Yeah. Defense, defense, defense. Reese thought about it. So did Donlin. Burisic taps it out to Donlin. 
Basrami, time to go with five on the timer. Lehman rebounds with under two minutes left. Both teams in the double bonus. Still a one position game, possession game. Batista against Bajrami. Opposite, Mo Idrisu. Lennox DeGrasse yep. on the glass is fouled. Big offensive rebound, and again, big Lennox planting himself in the paint and making it happen for Lehman. A 50% free throw shooter. Four points, about six rebounds per. Playing a role as the starting center. Has been on the floor the entire half. Purisic had picked up his fourth, so three different Baruch players with four, two for Lehman. After a long pause, he makes the second to make it a four-point game. Jamel Fair Whoa. buries the big three. Wow. Three for 10 before that shot. Takes it into his own hands to, to knock it down. Fifth made three for Baruch. One-point game with a minute left. As we anticipated that this one would be a thriller, down to the wire. Gathers, not there. Baruch rebounds and a chance to take the lead. Baruch trailed by as many as 12 late in the first half. They stormed out of the locker room with a 14-2 run, and we've been neck and neck ever since. Sean Donlin, the tip no. Over the back against Richards. The fourth on Richards. And it'll be free throws on the other end. Baruch gets the shot that they want. Donlin in the corner, high percentage three. Could knock it down. Good shot. And it was Will Feldman on the box out. Feldman 31 out of 33 this year. That's 94%. And this will be two shots. Oh. Uh. All 13 of his points came uh. in the first nine minutes of the game. Oh. But these are different types oh, of free yeah. throws oh, then different, man. in the regular season that oh, account for 94%. The tightness, man. He gets one of two. You get tight. Baruch will get the timeout with 26.3 left. Trailing by two. So how do the Bearcats approach this? Both teams in the bonus. Lehman has that ultra valuable possession arrow. Do the Bearcats run this clock down and look for a shot at the end for the victory? Do they attack and risk Lehman perhaps getting the ball at the end, even on a basket? You know, and getting the final shot. I, I, I would, if I'm, if I'm Baruch right now, I'm thinking, what will Lehman think we're going to do? I'm thinking that they're probably thinking that we're going to get the ball inside the Parasec or maybe to uh, a nod for a three. I would work the ball around, get it under 10, go inside and then go back out and try to win this sucker route with a three. You know, these kids are pressurized kids. They're used to, you know, being in situations like this. I'd rather take an uncontested three, which Ralph, I tell you what, that's like totally like not my thing, but I'm looking at this team and I'm looking at, you know, the way they've handled the pressure and they're shorter. So, you know, why not take the three, go in, go out, take the three, compete on the glass. 
see if he can just run home, run out the gym with this victory. Lehman, 21 and three. The one seed, trying to capture the program's second title. The other came in 2004. Baruch perennially in the CUNY finals, competing for a championship. Looking for the program's fourth. This is their fifth trip in the last seven years to the championship game. And what's interesting, is Lehman gonna play zone? And it looks like they're in their 3-2 zone. I was thinking they would come out in man. So Jamel Fair. Bajrami, trap came out against him. Richards in the baseline, into Purisic. We're is. tied with 9.8 yep. left. Pure Timeout, six. Baruch. Inside. Nice slip pass by Richards, who's played an excellent game. And we are tied. What a patient set by the Bearcats. Emil Purisic able to finish at the rim. Again, great ball movement. Play made right here. Great slip pass to Pirasek, his hands ready. Easy layup for two, and we're tied up right now. Now see, that that's the old me right there. I would have done that, but now that I'm like 2022, 20, Sean, I'm saying, you know what? I just want to win it. I want to run out in the blaze of glory. But good play, and now it's Lehman's turn to match Baruch, and we'll see if, uh, I don't know, Ralph, we're overtime again. Mm -hmm. We're here again. I mean, one of the all-time greatest CUNY Conference championships game was Baruch in double overtime against Brooklyn. Yep, yeah, that game back in 2015, we had yep. the privilege of broadcasting that one. Oh, yeah. As Brooklyn had that game under control. That's right. But uh, we've seen Baruch under John Alisi is never done. And just like they did today, early in the second half, came storming back. So we're tied here at 64. Now you're Steve Shulman. You've got a a likely All-American, your likely future all-time leading scorer in Isaiah Gathers. You've got all the personnel you can dream about in Division Three. They'll have to go the length of the floor. And Batista is such a blur. You know, I'd use Batista to set up either Mo Adrisu or go to Isaiah Gathers. Gathers is the inbounder. Cross screen, they look for Batista. He makes the catch with nine. Gian Batista, Ajnan Bajrami has the defensive assignment. Batista oh. for the win, it's off. It's out of bounds, we'll have overtime. Overtime. Batista got a good look. <laughs> so Baruch found a way to score and then extend the game. I mean, the ball in your players, your top players' hands, you know, had a good look. Just couldn't knock it down. So now a reset. Four Baruch players with four fouls. Three of them starters. Two Lehman players with four, including Gian Batista. They are outstanding point guard. Baruch has shot 42% for the game. 43% in the second half. Uh, Sean, we came in advertising and, and it was not marketing. It was just telling the truth, Sean. These two teams played two wire-to-wire -wire games in the regular season, each decided by four points apiece with the home team pulling it out late in the final two minutes. Uh, it's played out, I think, as we expected in terms of the score but maybe the flow has been a little bit different and who knows what's gonna happen. Well, this game was Baruch's pace. It's a 64-64. You know, Lehman wants to get up and down 80, 85, 90 points. Baruch kept their pace in this game. And even though, you know, we're in this overtime, it's gonna be interesting to see now if Baruch can rebound the ball well enough to stay in this game. Lehman has 20 offensive rebounds 20 tonight. 20 offensive rebounds, that's right. Yep, so I think this game is going to be decided on the glass. And what a better way, you know, think about it. You know, back and forth, Lehman wins at home, Baruch at home. You know, now it's tied, going into overtime. 
Just a great CUNY Conference championship look. No championship game last year. We've been waiting a long time for this. Gathers wins the tip convincingly. And here's Gian Batista. Baruch has four players with four fouls, so they're going to have to be careful on the floor. Actually, three players. Gathers, and he is challenged well by Purison. Oh, great challenge. Jumps straight up in the air. Good no call by the ref. Richards blocked by Batista. And the ball out of bounds. Back to Lehman. Another good call. No call by the ref. Yeah, this is Rome, man. We're in the, we're in the arena. <laughs> They're going to have to gladiate this. Right? Gladiate as a it. verb. I like uh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just using it as a verb. Yeah. You, know, you know me, Ralph. Yeah, that's. I make words up, man. That's Gladiate, good. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Winner to the NCAA tournament. Batista on the entry. Oh, Richards wow. with the overplay, the knockaway, and Bajrami the steal. Great defense by Richards. You can see why Elise touting him as the best player defensively in the conference. He's showing it tonight. Don Lynn. Burisic on the weak side uh, gives Baruch the lead. Could that have possibly been a pass, Ralph? It, it, no, no, okay. All I right. don't think so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. And there's the steal by Bajrami with Batista defending uh, with four fouls, and he had to let him go. Yeah. Gets him one-on-one -on, -one on that break. Gives him that Euro for the bucket. Baruch stretching their legs up four. Feldman, feet set, uh, and he's fouled while attempting the three. Bad foul by Donilon there. This one, Baruch had momentum. So here's Will Feldman for three. So it's the first CUNY championship game that's gone to overtime since that classic in 2015, we referenced Sean with Baruch defeating Brooklyn. Feldman will have one more. Yep, all his points in the second half have been from the free throw line. That's four for him so far. 17 for the game. Donlin. Richards driving on DeGrasse and puts it up and in. Tough shot. Just got him right in the kill zone area. Stretches his legs and goes right off the glass on Lehman. Batista the leave. Isaiah gathers. It would not go down. Lennox DeGrasse, another rebound. The reset out to Batista. A third try for Lehman. And there's the rebounding there. Lehman with another opportunity. See if Baruch can get away with three rebounds. Feldman. His floater is off, and it's an offensive foul. Good call by the ref. That time, Feldman out of control. And there's that man again, Williams, drawing the charge. Excuse me, Richards. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Richards family. Right, getting it done on both ends of the floor. Jamel Fair. That would have been huge. The tip out by Purisic. Purisic again in the high post where he has feasted. Pivots. Richards from the baseline.
and another half-court opportunity. Batista has just not looked to push the ball, Sean, either, and kind of create fast break. Gathers, fired it in off the hands of the right. grass. That's not like him. He should have just taken that up. He's a killer getting in that lane. Should have looked to score. This is where Baruch kills you on their execution. Great Richards. Pass. Big Great pull pass. up goes down. It's a two possession game. You give Baruch a chance to set up, run a play, man. They are tough. Very quickly. Huh. And there's Batista finding gathers. Timeout Lehman. And that's him playing fast, making a play, trusting his talent. 72 69. Michael Richards, a couple of buckets here in the second half. Adnan Bajrami is 18. Emil Purisic, the high man, in the game with 23 to pace the Bearcats. With 55 seconds remaining, Baruch has kept this game to their tempo, which is driving the speed limit at 55. <laughs> Lehman would prefer to go 70 plus on the turnpike. No doubt. And it just hasn't been there. Oh, the occasional sign of that has come, but it yep. just hasn't occurred. You, you know what, I can't say enough about Emil Purisek. Eight for nine from the field, five for six from the free throw line, 13 rebounds, Ralph. He's had an outstanding game. Has controlled the paint on the offensive end. It's been tough for him on the defensive you know, rebounding wise, you know, with Lehman really stretching out, rebounding, leading 41-36 overall. But this game is gonna come down right here to this possession. Baruch playing defense. And then, even if Lehman misses a shot, can they get the board? Big possession right here. Right, up. Oh, I said that the opposite way. It's, it's, it's Baruch's ball, but Lehman has to come out, try to, they don't have to really rush. They can just play good D, don't have to foul, you know, and then come down and try to execute a shot. Again, they don't need a three. Possession arrow also points to the way of Baruch. Fair, caught in a trap. Got it to Reese. Reese, two oh, seconds, and they just, just barely, barely get across. Barely got it across, Ralph. Dan Lehman does not have to foul. Bajrami, pass wow. behind him, came out to Fair. Fair with five, has to force it. It won't go. The tip out by Purisic, but Feldman has it. With 25 seconds left, Lehman does not necessarily need a three. Great Gathers look. does. No. Rebound, Fernandez. Out to Feldman. Fernandez for the tie. No. Follow up, missed by Idrisu. Rebound, Reese, under 10 seconds left. Baruch, the rebound and a foul. The Bearcats are just a free throw away from another championship. Lehman had multiple attempts at the rim. Had good looks, had three. Didn't knock it down. Now Baruch is on the cusp of winning a championship. I tell you, man, this has been a great game. <laughs> what a great game. Great series. And Will Feldman fouls out, and he might be their best three-point shooter in case of a free throw missed here. So Lehman loses him. He's done with 17 points. Redshirt Jr. from the Bronx, 36% from three, came out hot, looked like this would be a 25 point type game for him. He did not score a field goal after scoring 13 points in the first nine. So here's Sean Donlin at 77%. It is two shots. Uh, you know, he he hasn't touched the rim on his free throws all night.
Well, a missed free throw missed out of bounds. And it's going to point to Baruch with uh, 6.4. Just tough break for Lehman. So the Bearcats will need to knock down just a couple more free throws to make sure of this. Fair is fouled. Baruch was held scoreless for a five minute period in the first half. Lehman put together an 11 nothing run to lead at the break by 10, 39-29. Uh, you can see the tempo of the game was established. And the start of the second half, Sean, 14-2 run to open it up to get Baruch instantly back in the game. When you look back on this, maybe the most significant aspect in development that happened as Jamel Fair makes two, six-point game with 5.1 remaining, and Baruch can sense it. Sign of a, a good coach, a good team is when there's adversity, how do you deal with it? And Baruch came out that second half, they made the adjustments that they needed to make, started out fast, and they've just been super tough in this game, on the boards, making good shots. I'm incredibly impressed with their passing ability and getting to the basket, you know, with good looks, you know, against a very athletic Lehman team. And they were able to grind their way to 75 points despite five of 20 from three. Big defensive stop consistently, and they have frustrated Gian Batista and Isaiah Gathers, both well below their averages. Gathers, the leading scorer in CUNY at 24 game, has 16 tonight on five of 20. And Gian Batista, the third leading scorer in the conference at 20 per game. Batista's been held to a tough 16 yep. on five of 14, despite a championship game triple-double of 16, 11, and 10. That appears like it will be in a losing effort. You know what, I, I you gotta give Michael Richards his props, man. If I had like a defensive gold jersey, you can just give out, you know, guys give out the belt and all that. Give him the gold jersey, man, for just playing a great defensive game. Here's a quick catch and shoot three that's off, and that is it. Baruch pushes Lehman to overtime and then takes the championship. The Bearcats have won the program's fourth title and second in three seasons. The Bearcats, the two seed, are moving on to the NCAA tournament. They win a thriller from Lehman in the rubber match of the season series. Just take your hat off to Baruch. Both these teams, you know, played excellent, left everything out on the floor, but Baruch was just a little better tonight just got it done in the paint just made good decisions with the basketball offensively in the second half got good looks and come out with the victory the veteran bearcats showed their championship experience bringing back six of their top eight players from 2020 boy and they showed that iron sharpens iron they yes. never collapsed or fell apart at at times in this game where it looked like Lehman could pull away from them and exert themselves. I, you know, when they came out in the second half, the, the way their intensity was defensively, so they got a couple of steals, they got some putbacks, you know, some really good interior passing, so some easy shots, and they got Lehman on their heels, and they just carried that defensive momentum throughout the half and, and just won it, man. They just took this game from Lehman. Zach Weiss says the post game now with John Alisi. All right, folks, we are here with John Alisi. This is your third Cunyak Championship as Baru coach. You're now the only coach to go to two championship games that have been to overtime. The shot missed on the other end. Emil had the clutch layup and had you guys hold on and get it done in the extra session. Yeah, you know, we've, we just stayed with it. And, um, you know, we, we were in a good spot at halftime. We were okay with where we were at. You know, I thought we just gave them some easy ones. Um, but you've got to give the credit to the guys, man. They, they believed in themselves. They never got down. It's a long game. 
a lot of possessions, and, and they battled. And the way they came out to start the second half really, you know, picked us up early. You guys overcome Gian Batista triple-double and four lethal options. You're led by Emil Perisic, 25 points, 13 rebounds. How big was he for you tonight? He was great. Um, you know, total team effort. Emil's been doing it all year long. Um, you know, his growth, you know, with, with a year off in a pandemic, I mean, he's the guy that kind of organized the guys to get together and work when we really couldn't do much. He's really grown into a leadership role. He's not the most vocal guy, but he leads by example. And, and he laid it all out there tonight, and he's been doing it all year. And last question for you, Coach. Now you wait to see who you play in NCAAs. Are you confident that this bunch can get it done in the first, maybe the second round as well? No, right now we're going to enjoy this one. Um, but, you know, look, anytime you get an opportunity to compete in the NCAA tournament, it's, it's a blessing. And we've been fortunate to go to a few of them. So, you know, we're going to take the weekend, enjoy this, and then we'll get back to work after the announcement on Monday. And we're going to do the best we can. But, you know, these, these guys, have they've fought all year long. They've been incredible. Uh, we, we talked a lot about, you know, you don't have to raise your effort. You don't have to be anything special in a, in a, in a big game like this. You just have to fall back on the level of your preparedness, and nobody's prepared better than these guys, uh, and they deserve this. Down 10 at the half, turns into a six-point win. That is Coach John Alisi. We will hear in a moment from Emil Perisic as well. Uh, John Alisi, so calm always as he describes things. He's going to enjoy it, but uh, that's a championship, Sean, that, yeah, it was won today on the floor, but uh, it's a culture championship in a lot of ways, too. No doubt. Gladiate. That, that, that was two teams working really hard, going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and John's process won out. All right, let's go back to Zach. All right, we're back here, Zach Weiss, with Emil Perizic. Incredible performance tonight. The game-tying basket with nine seconds left in the second half, and then the first basket in overtime as well. As soon as you got that bucket, eventually sent the game to overtime. Were you confident your team could pull this one out? Oh, very confident. It's, we, we got some extra time in the game. Uh, I believe my coach, believe my team, and that's it. Just execute everything. Play hard, and now we're champions. Yeah, you're absolutely playing hard, both you and Adnan hitting some big shots over the course of the game. Michael Richards as well, but this is not your first go around with winning the Cunyak. You guys were here a couple of years ago as well. So now you're back on top. How does it feel now versus then? It feels amazing. Yeah, it just feels good to win. As simple as that, it just feels good to win. Shout out, shout out to my brother, shout out to my family, shout out to everybody, shout out to my girlfriend, my friends, everybody. Shout out to everybody. Now, now that the gang's all here, big celebration weekend for you as you get ready for the next next thing? Yes, yes. Now, now we got the Nationals, see what we can do from there on. But right now, just let's enjoy the moment, and that's it. We're champions. That's it. All right, they are champions. Emil Perez, an incredible performance. Baruch getting it done, so that'll do it for me right here. I am Zach Weiss. He is Emil Perisic. We have the championship production coming up in a second. Emil Perisic. Final numbers was 23 points, 14 rebounds, 9 of 10 from the field. Played a bunch of minutes to Sean after picking up his fourth foul. The finger roll to tie the game and force overtime at 64. He in the high post, he was a problem for Lehman. Oh, yeah, and, and you know, the pride of Ryan High School in Queens right now is letting people understand his game. And I like the... You know, he talked about leadership. You know, he talked about the things that he felt he could do for his team. And I like the gracious way he thanked his family, thanked his girl, thanked everybody. And, you know, he, that, that sort of energy was shown on the floor, Ralph. He, you know, what I really was impressed about him was his finishing ability around the rim. Left hand, right hand, backboard, floater. He had the whole package, the whole layup package going all night. And he was the player of the game, in my opinion. Yeah, he's the tournament MVP. That'll be announced and made official to the crowd here shortly. And now the Perisic family has two CUNY championships. His older brother, Ennis, played for Brooklyn College with those great Richard Jean Baptiste teams under Coach Steve Padias, class of 2020, winning two CUNY championships. So now Emil Perisic has added one. Some of the final numbers. Lehman ends up shooting just 33%, 7 of 29 from three, 42% for Baruch, 5 of 20 from three, but the Bearcats shot 4 of 9 in overtime. Lehman just 1 of 8. 
And for Lehman, a crushing loss. They were never able to ignite their transition. And Steve Schulman knew that this would be a half-court execution game. They average 83 points a game. So does Baruch, 79 per. Right. But Baruch knew this had to be a much more of a slow down game. And Baruch never allowed Lehman to get off the leash of a half court game. Came in and really pressured them, um, you know, defensively. Did a great job uh, in terms of containing Gian Batista, you know, not letting him get into this fast break game. They also did a good job containing all of the Lehman players that are able to bring the ball off the glass, you know, down the floor. They cut the passing lanes off and they just turned it into a half court battle. So as Baruch about to receive the trophy, final word on Lehman, Sean, 21 and four. Terrific year, Gian Baptista closes out his outstanding career with a triple-double in the championship game, but it comes in a loss. Batista, 16, 11 rebounds, 10 assists, but just five of 14, and he was not able to, to get his team out in NASCAR racing there. As, there's John Alisi, captain, and Adnan Barjrami, Jack Reese holding the Dutch shoe, which is the the championship trophy here in the CUNY Athletic Conference. Isaiah gathers tough shooting game, 16 points and five of 20. He'll be back next year and become Lehman's all-time leading scorer, but a bitter pill to swallow for Lehman. And yet another championship for Baruch as they find a way to win again. The Bearcats with their second title in the last three seasons with a year off for the pandemic. The program's fourth. John Alisi has been a, a part of all of them, one time as a player and three times as head coach. 75-69 is the final for our entire crew today from CCNY and Matt Holman Jim for our producer and director Ben Talbot, for Zach Weiss on the sideline, for my partner Sean Couch. As always, a pleasure. My name is Ralph Benorchik saying so long and good night. You've been watching the CUNYAC Men's Basketball Championship game on Facebook Live.